So you know how you asked me what it meant to be an ally? This is a word. This is a word. This is a word. Hey y'all, so this video, um, this may be the one. Um, you know, I don't want to say that it's the like, I'm quitting YouTube video, but I definitely think that this is going to be the video that is going to separate the folks who are really interested in being a part of a struggle for the liberation of all people and the folks that are just here because, you know, it's cute or what have you, right? And I don't blame anyone for that. I'm not going to judge anybody for that, but um, I think it's time to kind of pull the gloves off a little bit and really get real about what is going on in the world that we live in and specifically on this channel. So I've been doing this Food for Thought series for a little over a year now. I've been basically making YouTube videos for the past seven years. I have about 500 videos and this channel really did not start to take shape, like I said, until this, ser until this series got started. And I have really enjoyed and appreciated the opportunity to share with a lot of you build like really meaningful relationships with a lot of you and um, and you know you know get to see your channels grow get to see this channel grow get to have you know a decent number of subscribers but you know to be clear about some things you know this isn't YouTube isn't what I do um, as my life right this is just one of the tools in a whole set of tools that I use to reach people and to get clear on my own thoughts and my own analysis of uh, structures of, of oppression in the world, okay? So, you know, recently there's been, you know, there was, there was some disruption in the channel, right? There was somebody who, there was a person who just happened to um, be someone who could be identified as white, who just happened to be a male, who was really insisting on centering themselves in this channel, really. So all of the conversations, the most kind of like lively discussions were all being centered around that person, right? In fact, even my last live stream, probably about 20 minutes of that live stream was focused on that person. So I just, I don't want to like call it out or make too much of a thing, but suddenly why is this channel, you know, suddenly so centered around the care, the, you know, the, the maintenance and the caretaking of someone who has only demonstrated their desire to be disruptive of a process that, you know, we are going on to, you know, in a movement towards, you know, social transformation, right? We're trying, we're moving towards social transformation and that transformation would include the liberation of oppressed people, hopefully all oppressed people. So um, there was an incident apparently where someone on the channel who happened to be someone who could be identified as a, as a, you know, an African, um, you know, an African person, a descendant from Africa. Uh, I believe the person is, you know, originally from London, but it's a person who is um, an, uh, a black woman who could be identified as black, uh, who's living in the United States, uh, that that person responded to that disruptive energy in the group with a barrage of what have been described as hateful comments. And I want to just get a little bit real about that. Were they pretty comments? No. Were they comments that expressed, you know, a deep rage and probably hatred? Yes. But there was a fight going on, people. You know, something that we have been building together on this channel was under attack. And that person was the one who was willing to do what I wasn't certainly willing to do. I can't speak for anybody else, but I really was, it was all I could do not to verbally drag that person on the channel. Let's be real. And I think a lot of people probably had the impulse and wanted to see that person go away. And somebody stood up in the room and said, get the F out. We don't want you. And they used harsh language. And is it regrettable that that language was used? Probably. But let's be real now. The problem isn't the, the harsh language that that person used. The problem was the, disruptis, the disruptiveness that was going on. And so basically what we're in now is we're in like a tone policing mode. We don't like the exact words that were 
being used to try to get the job done, right? But I think that, you know, we come from this place of privilege and we talk about, I, sp I specifically, I talk about nonviolence, but the understanding is for this to happen, somebody's gonna have to put up a fist. In this struggle, somebody is gonna have to put up their fist. In a, in, a, in a violent battle that is being waged on black and brown people specifically all over the planet, we all can't just be like, oh, okay, you know, we'll love them enough to stop them from oppressing us. That's not gonna happen. And I'm not that naive, and I don't want anybody to think that I'm naive, and I'm not here to start preaching hate with you all, but I do want to talk about, you know, what it means to be an ally, right? Especially if you're trying to be someone who is, you know, you're somebody who is stewarding white privilege in the world, right? And so many of you have talked about the fact that you understand that you are stewarding white privilege in the world. And so for an African woman to stand up and cuss somebody the hell out, for us to even spend any time talking about the language that she used to cuss somebody the hell out seems a little futile when you think about the context that we are in. And that is we are living in the context of violence against black and brown people. Violence against women. <laughs> So when the sister got up and said, you know, you're, you know, uh, evil albinoid, right? Who, who, what is an albinoid? Uh, an albinoid? Somebody even tell me what an albinoid is, right? But we assume that it has something to do with whiteness, right? And because whiteness was called into question, it sounds so horrible, but come on, let's be real when we look at who is responsible for what's going on here, right? It's about white supremacy, right? So we have to be willing to name it and we have to be willing to give it a face and we have to be able to call it out as evil. It's evil. And it has to be stopped. And it's not about whose feelings got hurt, it's about that it is one of the pillars that is maintaining the systems that are destroying the planet. Those are the pillars that make the exploitation of animals possible. Those are the pillars that make climate change, global warming, possible, something near unstoppable, right? Seems futile to even talk about it because we know that the power structure that is in place, is it's, it's, it seems invincible. And it's certainly gonna be invincible if we don't think we're gonna have to stand up every now and then and cuss somebody the hell out. And say there's no room for that here. And sometimes you gotta fight, you have to fight fire with fire. That just happens, right? And so if somebody's gonna enter the room with stupidity and hostility, sometimes you have to return a little stupidity and hostility. And like, again, I'm not trying to say that I condone that particular way that it was done, but who had a better way? Who had a better way? Nothing else, has, nothing else was working. And guess what, the person is still around, right? And the person's made five videos about me where they've accused me of supporting racism and calling them a racist, right? You know, making accusations that were not true at all. And that I shouldn't even have to defend myself because you were all, you were all here, you were all following, right? And I'm not saying that I want, you know, everybody to go and like go to that person's channel and do whatever, whatever, I'll deal with that on my own. But to have, to make, to turn that conversation to the defense in any way of the disruptiveness and the white supremacist attitudes and the white supremacist apologizing that was going on in this space that was upsetting so many of the people who were commenting on this channel. And to suddenly have any of our negative attention focused on this tiny, one little tiny voice who got up and called somebody, you know, an evil al albinoid, right? And who, whoever, <laughs> what, you know, lost a job because somebody thought they were an evil albinoid, right? 
Whoever went to jail because somebody called them an evil albinoid, right? Whoever was shot by the police because a police officer considered them an evil albinoid, right? Who, have, who, who wasn't <laughs> elected president of the United States because people considered them an evil albinoid, right? So this whole thing about people getting all up in ears and, and defensive about being called a racist, being called a racist ain't gonna hurt nobody, right? You can be elected president of the United States and have a third of the population think that you're a racist and a sexist, right? It's not going to hurt anyone because the dominant culture is centered around whiteness. The dominant culture is centered around maleness. And as long as we attempt to keep our spaces safe for people like that, we are always going to be fighting an uphill battle until we're ready to say, you know what? Sit the hell down. Get out. I block you, <laughs> right? I do not accept what you stand for in this space. And to accuse the rage against that kind of oppressiveness and that the maintenance of the status quo to 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 conflate the rage against that with that is not being that's not being an ally that's just tone policing right until you have to walk in the sister's skin and fight the fight that the, sisters have to, the sister has to fight on a day-to-day -day basis, let's not blame her for the way she chooses to fight against oppression. And that's what she was fighting against, oppression. She wasn't turning that on the folks who are in this comment section who are offering, you know, real, me you know, meaningful, making meaningful contributions. And I'm gonna be honest with you, there are some people who, and, and I don't wanna get into trying to tell you who's good and who's bad, but there are some people, I, you know, I have said things that I know were centered in my own white supremacist thinking that I've been raised in by living in this country. So, you know, I just wanna say, back up and let's get some perspective here, right? And I know a lot of people are gonna get really, really ruffled by that. And a lot of people are gonna be like, well, that's racist of you. If one person can say something that's hateful and racist and another person can't, I'm sorry, if you are fighting against oppression with your life, I'm not gonna call you out as a racist. <laughs> There's no time for that. Right? It's not, I can't, there's no time, there's just no time for that. There's no time for that. And the fact that I have to take my time out to have this conversation with the struggles, just the protest at the airports, right? The struggles that are going on right now, the real damage that is being done by, you know, hell upheld by racist ideologies, patriarchal thinking, militarism, materialism, you know, the real issues. I can't believe that there's even, that there's even a conversation about this. Now, of course, I think a lot of you have a deeper analysis than that. So, and again, I don't want people to feel like I'm directing anger at anyone, but I just feel so uncomfortable to have to take my time out because someone who modeled hateful speech was called a name was called a name. Is that really what it's about? That's it for this video. 
that's it. <laughs> that's it for this video. Peace and love and all those things, but um, I don't feel like dancing right now.